everybody, it's Jessica here from Flowell, and I'm with Martina Fink, who is one of our Flowell mentors. We're so excited that you are filming this video with us today. Uh, the purpose of this video really is we've created a blog about seven reasons why you need social media marketing for your business. And we find that so many of the coaches that we work with are very hesitant or resistant when it comes to putting themselves on social media or using that as their way to market their business. Um, so we're going to try and demystify that a little bit today because it really is important. There's so much value in it. So um, Martina, do you want to just give our audience a little bit of background about yourself, what you do, um, you know, why you're with Flowell, and then we'll we'll get into your reasons. Sure. Thank you so much for having me. I'm really excited to share some of these social media things. I know it can feel very overwhelming. Um, so I'm a holistic health and beauty coach. I specialize in women who are rather perfectionist and high achievers who work a lot, who don't have a lot of time for themselves. So their health is not necessarily their top priority, but they know they want to change something. So um, yeah, that's kind of the area I specialize in. I think it has to do with how you look and feel on the inside, on the outside, you know, it's all tied together, physical health, emotional health, men mental health. And so for me personally, that's the glow, like the glow comes right. up when you have all areas in balance yeah. somehow. Yeah. Right. Mm -hmm. And so, yeah, when it comes to social media marketing, I was definitely hesitant in the beginning in terms of like, I was posting that, Hey, today's a great day. Have a good day. Like all <laughs> the, you know, happy yeah. vibes kind of thing. Yeah. Um, and over time, I just really had to learn how to be authentic and be myself. And so I think the number one reason why I use social media is um, to build trust, to be approachable, to show people who I really am, you know, as good as you can. And obviously, I'm still censoring what I share, but sure. it still um, makes someone a bit more approachable and, and makes someone um, to trust you more because they see you from different sides to see into your life. It's kind of like, you know, what you have for breakfast or who mm -hmm. you meet and spend your time with. So that just builds, builds trust and, and makes people like feel you. Right. So you're a real person who lives yeah. the way everyone else lives. Right. And that we're normal and we do everyday things just like the audience that we're putting our message out to. So, um, your Instagram, so I love your Instagram. Um, it's, well, and we'll, we'll put her handle here in the caption, but it's very, to me, and I hope this is what you were intending, but to me, it's very calming and it's beautiful. And I feel like it can like slow me down a bit, which is not a bad thing. I mean, like I, I look at it and I immediately know that it's you, which is actually something that we're going to talk about here too. Um, but as soon as your story pops up, I don't even have to look at the name. I know that it's you because it's very recognizable. And I feel like your message is really clear and that you are normal. I've seen your breakfast. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I've seen you go out for a walk. Right. And it's, it makes wanting to work with that person in business, it makes it that much easier to make that decision because mm -hmm. you're like, oh, I know them. I, I, I feel like I know her, right? And so it's deciding to say yes to a program that you're offering is that much easier when they can actually take a look inside. So yeah. yeah. And I think it also really ties to, you know, um, not just being authentic, but really practicing what you preach. Mm -hmm. um, if you look at the programs and what I offer, you will watch my stories and you know, this is exactly what I teach in the program, right? right. There are so many people who, I don't know, talk about meditation, teach meditation, but you never see them meditating. So there's a disconnect. Right. And, and that's what I think is so beautiful about using social media is you can show certain sides of you that really make you who you are. And then it's so much easier to convert clients because you're just yourself. You're not trying to pretend this like, you know, super successful person that you're not, or you're not um, trying to pretend to be the supermodel fitness girl, you know, mm -hmm. like you're just mm -hmm. yourself in every way. And that's just the most beautiful thing, like a business where you could just be you, you know, exactly. Exactly. <laughs> I agree. And it's so, and it's 
content like this that we're creating for really for both of our audiences that, you know, it doesn't have to be icky. It doesn't have to be salesy. It doesn't have to be, you know, you don't have to dance and point on reels if you don't want to, right? It's not, <laughs> which I do that, but I like to. So. so that's fine, but it's more about being authentic. And that's really at the root of it, because if you're not, that comes through where it doesn't yeah. feel genuine. And then there's, you don't have that trust that you're talking about. So, um, and yeah, so, and it's, if yeah, I can add one more thing, I yeah. think, um, the funny thing is it's, it's, um, you will decide based on how you feel. It's not that you will see someone and say, Oh, this feels weird because of what they're saying that what they're saying is wrong. Right. It's because, mm-hmm there is like an intuitive feeling that shows you that something is inauthentic and something is not real. So it doesn't even matter what people say, they're still going to feel your, your energy. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Thousand percent. So if I had to pick my number one, which would be point number two out of the seven. So Martina has, Martina has a list that she's going to talk about, which I'm going to be more on the business end of things and why it is Number two is it is cost effective marketing, right? So it's free. It's free. It's free to post on social media, right? So yeah, you can do the paid ads. You can do, um, you know, paid marketing on the internet. But when you have an audience of people that you have built, right, and that you are providing value and information to a very strategically chosen set of people, it's free. They're listening to you. You can tell them what you want them to hear, right? You can Mm. pitch your services. You can tell them how you're going to help solve their problems, right? Depending on your niche. And it doesn't cost you anything. And as a new business owner, yes, it takes a little while to build your social media following. It doesn't even have to be large, but, you know, to build your social media following, but you probably don't have a whole lot of disposable income to just throw out for marketing, right? So Mm -hmm. it's a really easy way for you to speak to your audience and not have to pay so much out of pocket for it. So that's mine, which is just very more like business sense, but it's, it's reasonable. It's, you know, it, it makes sense and you have people who want to listen to you. So talk to them. Yeah. And I think it's also a great way to um, test things out. You know, I've, I've taken courses on, um, um, Facebook ads and Instagram Mm -hmm. ads, and it's super interesting and I love it, but you have to really know what you're doing. Otherwise you're throwing your money out the window. And so use this space to test out who is my ideal audience. Does the Mm -hmm. content I create really resonate with the people? And so that's, you know, a great um, exercise to, narrow down your niche and like really get clear on what is my message? Who am I talking to? Mm -hmm. Who is my ideal client? Because when you know that it becomes, once you know that you can then start investing into ads, you know? Absolutely. Yes. Yes. And it's interesting that you say that because especially like Instagram and Facebook, they give you so many analytics that, I mean, it's right at your fingertips. You can see what's performing, Mm -hmm. what's not. I mean, right down to your stories, right? Like, did people swipe away from it? Did they leave? Like you can see every single bit of the engagement. I mean, and it's really detailed and to be able to do that for free is really invaluable, especially when you're first starting out. And that way you can experiment and you don't have to stress about, oh my gosh, am I wasting my time? Am I I wasting my money? Right. So, um, so that's mine. I'm going to give it back to you for the third one. So go ahead. Yes. Okay. Um, I just looked at it and I think it's not necessarily a reason why we need it, but it's, it's something important when it comes to social media marketing and it's mm-hmm. to be consistent. Yeah. Um, and that's true for your email marketing. It's true for your blog. It's true for podcasting, whatever it is, we have to be consistent so that when people come to our account, um, they see that we're actually real, we're, Mm -hmm. you know, up to date, we're active, we're not disappearing, um, you know, three months later. And so being consistent, I think, is a key element of social media marketing. It doesn't, you can have the best post if you post once a month, like it's not valuable, it's not enough in front of people's eyes. And so um, I think being consistent, whatever that may be, 
be for you. It doesn't mean you have to post five times a day. It can be maybe three times a week or even just once a week. But like you have to be on there. You have to be active and consistently show up so that you are actually nurtured. We say we nurture yes. people, right? So you cannot nurture them on one day and then leave them hungry for the rest of the month. Right. Right. Exactly. We talk about nurture all the time at Flowell. Um, email yeah. nurture, social media nurture. And so especially when you have maybe a higher ticket program, right, that you're putting out or even a moderately priced program, you know, you can't expect, like you said, to post one time and say, this is my service. Come and work with me and expect people to just flood in. It doesn't, it doesn't work like that. Um, and sometimes that expectation, it, it does kind of make me laugh a little bit because, w- and you have to think about yourself, right? Like, would you, if you saw one post from one person, one time, would you just throw your money at them and work with them? Probably yeah. not. <laughs> right. Yeah. You want them to educate you and talk to you and, you know, talk about, can they help me solve this problem? What is it that they do? How do they approach people? How do they communicate? Are they consistent, right? All of those things. And so that's where it all comes in to being consistent and showing up and letting them know that you are there for them and that you can do this. So yeah, we talk about nurture all the time. (laughs) Um, Same thing. So um, again, so for me, I'm going more business, with this. Um, so organic traffic, right? Talk about organic traffic. When you have people going to your social media, the likelihood that if you have a good call to action, and we can get into that in a different piece of um, content, but they're more likely to go to your website. If you're posting your newest blog in your stories, right? New up on the blog, there you go. Organic traffic to your website Video content is shared by like 74% of people. They share it to everyone they know, right? So it's like, if something was really interesting, any kind of brand content, like I send it to my sister. I'm like, oh my gosh, look at that, right? And it gets sent out. And now you have this organic traffic coming from all circles and maybe people who weren't even following you to begin with, right? Because people share your message and then they start coming to you to see what you have to offer them. So that is one thing, again, invaluable because you could pay for traffic (laughs) to your website, but probably not, you know, the best decision when you're first starting out. So, you know, think about that. Think about everything that I put on my website or if I have landing pages or challenges or anything that they want to try and get people into, you have a free platform where you can put that out and drive traffic to wherever you want people to go. Yeah. Yeah. And one thing I would add here is it also goes the other way. Like I, um, in terms of content, so any blog post that I post on my blog, I, I maybe divide it into three or four Instagram posts mm-hmm. and post them on Instagram. So not everybody who follows you is going to see every single piece right. of your content and they're not necessarily going to listen to every single episode of your podcast or you know, read every single blog post or email of yours. So if you have one piece of content and you can spread it over three or four platforms, Mm -hmm. that then also helps, you know, you're consistent with and and coherent with your messaging everywhere. And people can go to whatever platform and find you on the other ones with the same content. Right. Right. And it's just repurposed, which is, I mean, and we do the same thing. We'll have a long form video it gets chopped up. Some of it goes onto YouTube shorts. Some of it goes onto Instagram reels, right? And then we have a blog that's associated with it and it all goes together for a certain topic, but it's spread out in different ways, which is the visibility is just fantastic at that point. So um, yeah, no, I totally agree. We have a very similar uh, strategy when it comes to (laughs) that. (laughs) If you can get more done out of one piece, right? Then you're not spending so much time making the content that you're putting out there, which I think is part of some of the hesitancy is I have to create all this content. I have to put something out every day. I have to create something new every day. No, you don't. (laughs) No, no. No. Okay. What do you have up next? Okay. My next one um, would be the, it's also a reason why, why we need to use social media marketing and that's to um, stay top of mind of people's top of mind 
stay top of mind for people. Yeah. And um, I just, yesterday I was Googling something and I saw that the attention span of, of people have gone down from 12 seconds to 8.25 seconds or something like that. And so knowing that people are not even reading your posts, they're not even, you know, watching your full videos or listen, uh, listening to your entire episodes or whatever it may be, like it, a few seconds and they're on to the next thing. And so it's important to be consistent again so that people continue to see you. Um, because like I said, they don't see everything you post on every platform, right? Mm -hmm. It's only a piece of it. And so in order to be in their face almost is, you know, you have to, you have to be consistent and, and continue to show up and that will help people take decisions. Because when I first started my business, which was maybe almost, yeah, eight years ago this year, um, we used to say that we need to see something seven to 20 times before mm -hmm. we take a buying decision. And now think eight years later, we probably have to see something 20 to 50 times. Right. I don't know what the, um, the current statistics are, but it's a lot. So you have to see somebody post about a program or a service at least 20 times before somebody clicks to book a call or clicks right. to reach out or even just sends you a message. Right. And that's why we want to stay top of mind for people and, and make sure they think about us. Mm -hmm. Exactly. And creating content that has a strong hook and that, you know, you don't want somebody to swipe away from you, right? You want to grab them from the very, the moment that they see you, you want to grab them with whatever that message is. Um, mm -hmm. And I did not realize that the attention span went down. I mean, it doesn't sound like that big of a dip, but that's tremendous. Can you imagine an attention span of eight seconds? You actually floored me <laughs> with that piece. Um, yeah, which is not a whole lot of time. Mm. It's not a whole lot of time to get your message out there and, and get it across for people to actually, you know, yeah. understand what it is that you were trying to tell them and, and what you can yeah. provide to them. It's not a lot of time. Wow. And I think it ties back to something that you mentioned earlier about my Instagram. Like you can watch my stories without knowing that it's me, but you know, it's me, you know, mm -hmm. like if you have a good brand, yep. people will recognize you, whether it's the font or the color or mm -hmm. the filter or what you post, you know, and so that will make it easier for people to say, oh, okay, this is this person and, and it will connect with them on a, on a more emotional level or more subconscious level than just you having to talk. Like I don't have to talk about anything glow related. Whenever people see glow, they think of me, you know? Mm -hmm. And so, um, that's not, yeah, that's, it, it is, it does tie into social media and how you present yourself, I think. Absolutely. I mean, again, like I, you are very recognizable to me in my face, but not in, when someone says in your face, it kind of sounds like a negative. But it's like, it just I'm like, oh, it's Martina. There we go. They're going to watch her stories, right? So, you know, and that's what you want is a, is a recognizable brand when you're, mm -hmm. and if you are posting on social media, that's one of the biggest pieces of advice that anybody will give you is to stay on brand, right? You know, absolutely. make sure that people can recognize you and know that it's you. And so, um, yeah. So for me, again, going back to statistics, because I love numbers and data, um, your customers, although this might be debatable for some people, but your customers are on social media. That's where the clients are. I mean, yes, we do a lot of work with referral partners and power partners in our business, but 59-ish percent of people go on to social media platforms, whichever their you know choice of social media platform is, every day. And then those people check it more than five times a day. The customers are there. Your clients yeah. are there. They might not know it yet. And you might not realize just yet who your target client is, but they are there. People are on social media. They just are. And you don't have to go on and say, hey, buy from me, right? Like how you said, I don't have to say glow for people to know that it's me, right? Yeah. So, you know, they are out there. And that resistance to wanting to market yourself on social media for a lot of the coaches that we work with too. They're just like, Ooh, nope, I don't want to do it. I don't want to do it. But your clients are there. They're there mm -hmm. and they're looking and their eyes are open. And so, you know, it would be, 
really unfortunate to not use that marketing tool, right? And to use that platform to put yourself out there because they're there and they're checking all day. So yeah, absolutely. I think it may depend a little bit on your target audience or maybe also on the age group. Um, I think probably younger generations are also very much on TikTok or, right. you know, other platforms mm -hmm. that I don't use. So depending on the kind of audience you, you yep. serve, you might want to do some research and find out where do they actually spend most of their time. Right. But I want to say maybe people 25 to 40 ish, probably a lot of them are definitely on social media every day, mm -hmm. you know, several times a day, like mm -hmm. you said, um, and one thing that just came to mind as you were talking is also that every time, anytime I see someone, maybe somebody sends me a website or even it's a product that someone sends to me, like the first thing I do is I check them out on social media, yeah. you know, like I check to see what is their vibe, what is their yeah. energy. Mm -hmm. It's just, again, this, this, um, uh, this in, not intuitive, but like subconscious thing that you you want to get a better feel of a brand before you decide to give them your money. Absolutely. And that's what it's really great for. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah, we actually yeah. had, it's so funny that you say that. We actually had um, a webinar that we hosted just recently and we were talking about you know, the way we market and how we teach marketing and some of our strategies as health coaches. And one of the questions that came through the chat was, do I have to have a social media? Is it required? And I mean, the answer is no, it's not required. It's your business. You can do with it what you want. But, and I said the exact same thing that you just said. I said, if somebody hears about you, the first thing they're going to do is look you up and they're going to look on social media. They're going to see if you have maybe a Facebook business page or, you know, they're going to look on Instagram and see if they can find you. And, you know, it's good to have your own house, right? Like you want to be able mm -hmm. to put your message out there, show people who you are, so is it required? No, I mean, it's not required, but I mean, just like that's what Martina does. She looks at a brand yeah. before you commit to them. That's, that's part of it. So it's, it's worthwhile to, to put yourself out there in a consistent way. Yeah. And I think we're also more sensitive to, um, how do I say this? So I'm, I'm very aware of the kind of things that I purchase. So for example, if I decide to work with a business coach or whatever coach or, or purchase a skincare brand, I really want to know what they stand for. I'm no right. longer here for just the marketing strategies and, mm -hmm. you know, the five tips or whatever. Like you want to know that you align with a person on a personal level. Like you have, you, sh you share the same values or, um, yeah, you, you appreciate certain things in life whatever that may be, like mm -hmm. sustainability, organic right. skincare. Um, I really value family. So someone who yeah. is, it's weird. Like you would not necessarily think that this is a, a purchasing decision, you know, factor, but, and it may, may not be, but it definitely helps if you find someone who aligns with some of your values. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. And especially, so our audience here is, health coaches, right? And people in the health and wellness field. And that is such an intimate industry to be in when you're working one-on-one -on -one with a client, mm -hmm. you know, I mean, in a lot, you know, people do groups and they can sell like bundles of, of courses and things. But when we really get down to it, we're talking about the one-on-one -on -one mm -hmm. program that they're purchasing and they're working with you so intimately that that connection is everything. Yeah. It's everything because you're not just talking about macros and exercise. I mean, no. we know that like we've been coaching for a long time and it gets really personal. And if that connection is not there, the, the relationship is not going to work. So yeah. I think that finding that and, and being able to show your target clients who you are to make sure that they know that they're safe with you. If that's, you know, if you are their person, it's, you have to, you have to. Yeah. Yeah. I want to say this brings me to the last point, which is relationships. Um, or starting conversations in that mm -hmm. sense, because there are many ways we can start conversations with a potential or as a client, there are ways, different ways to start a conversation, right? We can book a free call, we can mm -hmm. fill in a contact form, but it's just, there's something easier or more like 
friendly or closer. I don't know how exactly to describe it. it there is definitely less um, hindrance for someone to reach out on social media and send a DM or to, you know, start with a comment, start commenting, start liking pictures um, compared to someone booking a call. With, with a call, you have to like make time, you have to find mm -hmm. a time, you have to make sure you have all the, you know, questions answered in the form, you're prepared. Mm -hmm. With the DM, it can just be something small. It's like no commitment. It's nothing crazy, right? Mm -hmm. And you can see how the person responds. Right. Right. Absolutely. And the point that you just brought up about comments is something that we take very seriously at Flowell. It sounds so silly, but if somebody is going to take the time to engage with you on a piece of content, whether it's them saying like, yes, that's me. I, I get it. Like you get me. Right. Or if they have a question, that is the beginning of a relationship. Yeah. Absolutely. Right there. Right. And it's, you know, and then by you responding, you're showing them that you're real, that you're hearing them, that you're paying attention. And all of those things go into fostering that relationship that could end up in working together professionally. Yeah. So, um, yeah, I think you're a thousand percent right. Not not honing in on that engagement really is um, a pitfall, I think, for a lot of people, because if somebody, again, is taking the time to to reach out to you on something that you've created, you have to talk back. That's that's where it starts. Right. And it's very simple. Mm -hmm. It could be a one, two, three, back and forth. But that person, you will be in that person's mind because Absolutely. you took the time to respond to them. So Yeah. And it's uh, also when you start noticing that someone becomes kind of turns from a cold lead into a warm lead. So somebody who just follows and watches you but never comments, never engages anything is a, is a cold lead. So they are probably interested in, you know, what you do and what you post about, but they're not ready to do anything. But as soon as they start commenting or sending you a message or even liking your your posts, mm -hmm. that means they're like one step closer to you. They're mm -hmm. becoming a warm lead, which means um, they're starting to have a conversation with you, even though it may be very distant still. Absolutely. And it's always good to have warm leads because then it's just a matter of time until they actually convert into becoming a proper client. Right. And then that circles right back to nurturing and being consistent because now you've got some eyes on you, right? And so you want yeah. to keep showing up and keep nurturing that relationship and show them the value that you can bring to them. So um, this brings us to the end. This was so fun. I was, I'm so grateful that you were able to take the time and sit and chat with me about this. Um, I mean, you are a real live successful coach in your industry. And, you know, these are ideas and, and value that it works for you. Right. So mm -hmm. thank you so much for sharing this with our audience. Um, of course. We will be doing more of these chats with Martina as we continue on. So you guys can look forward to new videos being posted on YouTube or on Instagram. Our handles are we are flow well. And um, we will put all of Martina's information down here. You can follow her, connect with her. Um, and she is one of our mentors. So you will be seeing Martina in Flowell um, as a mentor moving forward. So thank you so much. Thank you thank so you. much. I think it's really important to talk about these points and, you know, to be really transparent. I have a love-hate relationship with social media, you know, there are <laughs> many times where I'm like, I don't want to do this anymore and the <laughs> algorithm and all the changes and the reels and all that stuff, right? But I think the reasons we talked about today are exactly the reasons why I'm still on there because mm -hmm. there are still so many benefits to using it, um, even when there is sides to it, you know, that we don't necessarily agree with or want. But um, yeah, it's definitely, I don't see myself going anywhere else, <laughs> you know? No, I mean, really, us two, we're the same. And my advice straight to all the health coaches out there who are following us, um, get out there, put yourself out there, send your message, right? Be authentically you and, you know, and you'll start resonating with people. So um, if you need a little confidence boost, you know, you can reach out to us and we'll chat and get you through it. But um, sometimes you have to just close your eyes and hit post and, Absolutely. <laughs> and then that's it. And then just close it. Um, so this was great. We will talk to you again soon. And um, yeah, thank you.